Williams and Bloom Picks Pod here on the Cycle and Fanatic Podcast Network. You're also watching us on YouTube. My name is Chris Williams. I am joined, as always, by Brent Bloom. And the Thursday show is presented by our friends at Nebraska Furniture Mart and Clive. Very excited to share that I was I was doting about my refrigerator in the garage last week. And Bloom got a text from somebody immediately who went out and bought said refrigerator. I that know. is marketing at its finest, everybody. Thank it you. Is. It is. <laughs> I happened to be that day in the store and uh, the CEO of our company was there. Woo, and I showed good. him that and he was like, uh, yeah, that's impressive. That yeah. Quick. Well, you know, it's like it just aired last night. Well, we the, I will say this too. If you're listening on Thursday or even Friday and you've got the Halloween coming up, you know, like, big deal in our town, Tim, yeah. huge deal in our town. Yeah. And we're all Bond Durant guys. Um, that it's the perfect garage fridge. You could still go get it this weekend and have yeah. it for the, for the Halloween. So here we are. We're just selling refrigerators on Cycle right. Fanatic. We used to do the deals like with the big screen TVs and and now we've we have matured to selling garage refrigerators. <laughs> very cool refrigerators though. Very cool. Oh, it's I very did. manly. Very, very manly. got all that good stuff. I, I, I had a gentleman come up to my tailgate and he goes, "I just just got something to say to you, Bloom." I'm like, "Okay, this is usually either oh, going to go one way or one yeah. way or another." Yeah. He's like, "My favorite podcast you do is listening after the fact to hear how wrong you guys are on the NFM podcast. <laughs> he goes, and it just makes my day. Yeah. He, but then he goes, but you're usually right. And I'm like, well, thank you. Well, not well, this year. But not this year. <laughs> well, this Updated year, standings, Tim. Good. We're doing pretty good so far. I mean, I will tell you, uh, by a miraculous way from the cellar to the penthouse, uh, C-Dub is in first place now. Um Last week, uh, Bloom, we got you by one game. We went four and two. You went three and mm -hmm. three. So now we basically – Chris has a game on me. I have a game on you. So you are in last place now, Bloom, after living high on the hog earlier in the year. Who's in last again? Can you say that one more time? Yes, Brett Bloom is in last. Uh, <laughs> some people don't even remember the week that he went undefeated. It doesn't matter. Uh, he's last place now. So uh, yeah, That's it, great. It's embarrassing, Bloom. Well, as the Iowa State football team has proven this year, you can't get a comeback unless you're behind. Bloom is the <laughs> king of adversity. He is yeah, our Rocco back. That's right. I'm the Rocco back. It's exactly. Rocco back. Of, this, threw, of this podcast. I just threw a pick six. The guy dropped it at the one-yard line, and they scored anyway. But here we go. Yeah. yeah. What a travesty. I don't get this, too, guys. Help me with this. How? Do, <clears throat> excuse me. And I, I'm just trying to – how do you win and go down in the rankings? How does that happen? Yeah. You know, it's – I'll tell you how no. our audience is tired of me saying no, it, but perception is oftentimes reality. And yeah. even when perception is wrong. Yeah. Right. I mean, how many times in this world do we perceive things that we think are right, but, but that just simply aren't. And you can get me going. Uh, these AP vote voters are, I'm not going to call them idiots because they're not like individually idiots, but they're, at, they're being asked to do a job that they can't possibly be good at. There's yeah. no, like maybe like 15% of those guys can sit there and like say that they're watching these games. Most of them aren't. And yeah. it's their perception that has poisoned their minds. And that's why. Uh, I Tim, I think the, the better answer is because Iowa keeps losing. <laughs> it's hurting the schedule. <laughs> you always got to go to the hot. That's a, that's a it's joke. Always, it's always hurting the schedule. You know, I was watching uh, game day last week uh, and they were doing picks. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, Nick Saban. Uh, he used to coach this team in Alabama. From his mouth to your ears said, I believe Iowa State is the most underrated team in the top 25. Well, interesting you say that, and I'm working on a little deal right now. The power ratings, like shockingly yeah. to me, yeah. agree with Mr. Saban. Yeah. Like Iowa State would not be that big of an underdog against a lot of these top five right. type teams this year. Right. I mean, like they, they would be like a field goal four point, like with like LSU and those types of like SEC teams. So yeah, yeah like I Saban, Saban must be hanging out in Vegas a lot. The interesting thing about it to me is this, is that I, I don't know if you guys know this. I'm a Chiefs fan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unabashed have been since I was eight. Still mad. We drafted top Blackledge in 83. I'm that old of a fan. Mm, what I'm man. getting at is this. I still believe now the sign of a great team is not so much when you go out and kill people, but when you get in a game like they did last week to have the ability yeah. to pull through on that, that is a good team. 
It's not that you can go out there and crush all these people. It's when adversity hits. Well, to and, the fortitude to pull through on that. To me, that's you, a sign of a great team. You saw that in Iowa City too, right? They couldn't even get a snap off in the first quarter. Nope. And totally changed. Yeah, completely. They, yeah, they came out and were a team that wanted to win in the second half of that game, and they were in this game, and they never, ever quit. And I don't know. I mean, historically, you know better than I do, but I think that was kind of a Achilles heel for teams past of – when it got bad, they just didn't know how to get out of it. And you saw a team this last week that really was like, we're better than this. Let's go. And they did. It was impressive. Well, um, no doubt. And we're really glad to keep the win streak going. It's yeah. It's been a heck of a lot of fun. We're, before we get into this week's picks, Tim, yeah. big week <clears throat> at Nebraska Furniture Mart, the big spooktacular. Let's get everybody filling up that store on Saturday. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun, guys. And, you know, it's it's something we take a lot of pride and fun doing, creating events for the community to come in and, you know, get in out of what now might be a chilly morning. Uh, but, you know, there's going to be some colder evenings throughout holiday weekend, uh, whatever night you go into your trick or treat. But come in and see us uh, on the 26th this Saturday from 10 to 2. Uh, I saw our team in there this morning working on balloons and gifts and trinkets, and they're going to do some scavenger hunts. There'll be some uh, cartoon characters there having fun. But, it's just a really good opportunity to come in. It's a safe environment. Our team loves being with, you know, taking care of the kids and having fun. And then, you know, while you're in there too, you know, big TV, gladiator fridge, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that, we're always there for you to take care of it. But for us, you know, it, it's one thing it's to promote. So people know who we are, where we are, of course, but we really do have a, a very strong background in community work and volunteerism and just creating events for people to come enjoy. No questions asked, no holds barred. So, Bring them on in free event, have a good time with us, and then uh, and then enjoy your afternoons since the cyclones aren't playing. I know how you retail people are. You kind of just skip Thanksgiving now and we'll just go straight to Christmas. So what's yeah. um can we can we get an update? Are we gonna have a reindeer this year, a live reindeer in the parking lot? I will tell you, we are we're on two years in a row of having a live reindeer there. But I will tell yeah. you, both years he's come, it's just been really bad weather outside. <laughs> I thought well, so like he kind of liked it. I, I told him I felt bad. You should almost invite him into the store. Uh, but the one time it was so cold that they they packed up shop after an hour or two, and I totally understood that. But, yeah, uh, we'll always have some fun stuff. We'll do Santa's gift shop again, so there'll be some toys sporadically throughout the store. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we start talking about – well, we've been talking about Black Friday, or as we like to call it, Green Friday, uh, for about three weeks now already, so – We'll have Good a lot of stuff. fun stuff going on, too. And, again, just to remind everybody, too, uh, we're actually setting the floor on it this coming Tuesday, but our exercise equipment department will be coming into play. So, you know, come get Heck your yeah. treadmills, your ellipticals, your, you know. I think you deliver gonna, those? Like, do you deliver those, too? Yeah, deliver oh. them, put them together and everything. Okay. And it's well worth the service. I, I, yes. I told the team that was putting them together, my wife uh, has a treadmill and uh, elliptical and a rower, and I got to put all three together. And don't get me wrong, you can do it, but it's not fun. It takes time. It's very tedious work. I, Let our I professionals can't. who are set up to come do it. I'm I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's well worth it. But that'll be set on Tuesday as well. So uh, after the spooktacular, come back through the week or something, see if there's anything from that department we can want. We'll have a new arcade area set up as well. well let's get after it. Let's get to the games. <clears throat> what we got on tap this week, Timmy? All right, gentlemen, we got six games. At first, I thought it was kind of a boring week when I started digging. Uh, but then I found some tasty morsels that I like for particular reasons. And I will begin with uh, Nebraska at number four, Ohio State. Ohio State favored by 22 and a half. Nebraska just coming off where they got whitewashed by the mighty Hoosiers of Indiana. Uh, and Ohio State, number four, 25 and a half at home. I, I mean, I don't know. This is kind of a lackluster game for me. But I kind of like Nebraska to come in and, as I keep stealing from Bloom, be – just not bad enough to lose by less than 25 and a half points. So I'm going to take Nebraska and take the points here. What do you got, Bloom? Is 25 and a half? Is that the, is that the 25 and one? a half. Yeah, I'm going to go with you. I am too. All right. <laughs> Nobody's really confident about that one. I know. I well, don't know. I, mean, the, I think I, that line's that, there because of what happened in Indiana, and I don't think that, that Nebraska team is who played no. in Indiana. And isn't Rule the type, too, who will just – not do anything crazy. Correct. Freshman quarterback. Yep. Just keep it on the ground. Yep. I don't know. Feels he, he is feels... a type. That's a good point. See up. He. I don't think he'll want to get beat by fifty two weeks in a row. No. No. Although. Just slow the game down. Here is why I'd be nervous. 
Ryan Day and Ohio State need a need a statement. And so yeah. he's he's running up the score if he can. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah it it is, could go that way. But I Nobody, think okay, basically we're there. we're telling our audience we don't feel very confident in this. Hundred percent not confident, yes. <laughs> I am 100% that I am not confident on this at all. All right. What do we all got right. next? Uh, next game, uh, Notre Dame, 14-point favorite on the road at the Naval Academy. Number 24-ranked Navy, who is currently undefeated. Completely disrespected at home, giving up 14 points to Notre Dame. Give me the midshipman here. Chris, what do you uh, got? I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I want the yeah. midshipman, triple option. Now, style points, Notre Dame needs as well. They do. You know, like it, but no, that that's too many points. Road team, midshipmen are a great story. I'm not, you think I would, you think I would bet against the United States Naval Academy? God oh, hell America. no. No way. Bloom will. He's uh, captain. Yeah, I was going to say, you just said that now. Bloom's like, I don't know if I should. 14 and a half? 14. No hook. Oh, man. I'm just looking at, they can't, they can't stop them. I'm sorry. They won't be able to stop Notre Dame. Okay. Oh wow! They won't. No, so you're betting put... against the men and women of the United States Navy? Just the just the eleven people on defense. Yeah. <laughs> um, fifty to twenty-one. Oh, wow. goodness! Yeah. Wow. You know, okay. I get what you're saying, Bloom, but this is the only thing where we're talking about how Nebraska is going to try and slow that game and grind it down. I'll bet you Navy throws the ball like five times this game. You know? Yeah, they're still going to give up fifty points though. So. <laughs> okay. Disagree. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, hey, circle this one. Circle. This yeah. one. Upset watch. Upset yeah, watch. watch. By week, come over to my house. We can hold hands and watch this one together. Upset watch, baby. Perfect. I'll Go be on. wearing the American flag. I don't know yeah. which one Bloom will be wearing. Be <laughs> draped in the red, white, and blue. <laughs> That's right. All right, gentlemen. Next up, uh, number twenty, Illinois, uh, going to the number one ranked Oregon Ducks. Oh, God, I mean, geez. Twenty-two point spread. Oregon favored by twenty-two at home versus Illinois. Tr- this is tricky. Well, I'm gonna get your I want to get your take on it because Bielema is really good in these spots, like just covering. The problem is he knows how to like do these against Big Ten teams. Oregon is still not a Big Ten team, Mm-mm. right? Like they're just built different. It's you know when they go out to Penn State, we were all scared of it, and he, he took care. Of, I, I'm still I'm gonna play Illinois just because it just it seems. That seems like a massive number, but I know it's there for the smart play is to play Oregon, I believe. But I, I I'm going to take Illinois. It's just it's too many points. I fell for this trap when they're at Penn State. I think Bielema's team's a little better than most of us think. Well, <sighs> God, these games are hard. This week. <laughs> yeah, Tim, no. could you have picked more difficult games? This I know week? that's, oh, that's why I was like at first I was like ho hum, and then I'm like no, these spreads are fun. Yeah, fourteen no, on this, maybe this, the twenty two on this. Oh, I wouldn't bet this with Bloom's paycheck. Oh. And, and yeah, do better. The I'll take Illinois too. Again, okay. don't like it though. Not a fan. Not a fan of it. I was totally I'm, waiting so, for you. I'm, I'm going to take the better team here. No, well, I, I I I think Oregon's very good. I don't think they're 22 think? points better than a average Illinois team. Yeah. I'm currently on a 25, team. 22, and 14 point underdog this week. What about you, Tim? Yeah, yeah, I'm loving it. You're on the underdog too. I'm loving it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're gonna yeah, I already had it marked down. All right, we're so riding the dogs. I think the same thing. I think honestly, I think Beelum is one of the best coaches in the Big Ten. I think he is. He's a heck of a coach, and I think he's going to be able too. again just good enough to not lose by more than 21 points. Uh, next up, we have Northwestern at Iowa. Iowa favored by 14 and a half. <laughs> I'll go Northwestern. I'm going to take the underdog too. Although, isn't this like just ripe for, you know, all the Iowa fans are killing them now and then they're going to go out and win by 30 and then Ferentz can be, you know, everybody's puffed up after the game. And then next week, Illinois comes in and beats a, or Wisconsin does. Like, it, I feel like I've seen this. I think this that before. should have been the Michigan State game. Yeah. yeah I, th- I think they may be better than we think. But, you know, I'm taking the 14 and a half. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm taking the 14 and a half. Because I think they may be better than people think. Bloom. Yeah, yeah, they they won at Maryland. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't say this disrespectfully. I think Iowa and Maryland are. Yeah, I don't disagree. Especially if Iowa's defense isn't what it has been. Correct. Um, 
that just seems a lot of points for a quarterback that still can't throw. I, I don't. It is. It is ugly. I got to go Northwestern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this watch. This will be the week we all go. Oh, and six. Yeah. Oh, so far we're all together except for <laughs> he's a communist and took Notre Dame against Navy. Just kidding, uh, audience. He's not a communist. He's a fine American. <laughs> Got to be careful what you say on TV these days. Uh, uh, I, I okay. I love this game as much, given who it is. Number 25, Vandy. Number 25, Vandy. Another is hosting, hard game. God, are man. hosting number five, Texas. They're an 18 and a half point favorite on the road in the house that just beat Bama and that Nick Saban also said is the absolute toughest place to play in the SEC. Because they have nothing to lose and they don't care. 18 and a half points. What do you got here, C Dub? I want the points. Yeah. I want the points. I mean, I mean, who has Texas beaten this year? Michigan? Okay. Yeah. They suck. Yeah. I want uh te- Texas has got like a quarterback thing that's kind of chirping over there. They do need the style points too. That would be a big deal for them to blow out a top 25 team like Vanderbilt. But, like, I mean, come on. Like, 18 and a half points for the home team that's in the top 25 that we've already seen beat really good teams. I want yeah. I want Vanderbilt. Yeah. Commodores, let's go. Yeah, the, the problem for me here is not only has Vandy beat Alabama, they won at Kentucky as well. So it's not like that was just some – Right. And Pabby is a fine quarterback. I <sighs> – Will it help I'll you take, if I tell I'll you I'm going to take the take... 18 points? Okay, Let's take the 16 you you underdog parlay, Tim. Is... I've never done this before in my life. I've never done this before. Oh, that's great. These are so obvious. It just feels... <laughs> I know. It feels terrifying and ugly to make these bets. Okay, the next one I think is just as fun. A uh, little team called UCF. No. Two-point oh. favorite at home. Versus number uh, eleven undefeated BYU. I love this play. I'm taking Central Florida. Yeah, what is? I, honestly, I, this is one of those ones I usually write one a week where I go, I'm just going to listen to you two and decide who I think sways my opinion. Well, I'm taking Central Florida. Anytime the one and three team is favored over the team in the top ten, Vegas is they're they're showing you what to do, but they know that we're too stupid to do it. So I'm going to go with what they're telling me to do. You don't win all these bets, but you win more of them than you lose. I want Central Florida. Okay. Yeah, this is this is, a, this is exactly what C-Dub said. This is a 70% play. You're going to win 70% of these things. Just, you are. This one could go the other way, but I don't, I'll don't. i play the system. Give me the Knights. This was the same bet. I, we keep using it as an example when Penn State was the big favorite over Illinois or whatever. Remember, we talked about that game forever, and it's like, why is it? Why is it? Yeah. They're telling you, like they are projecting what they, because any casual better fan that looks at this game will see the number next to BYU. They're undefeated, and that team's one and three, but they're still favored. Oh man, they're just giving this to me. That ain't how it works, brother. I mean, at two points though, you're basically saying UCF's going to win. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a close enough spread that you think they're going to win. And a uh, little note too, Tim. Did you grab these no- these lines today? Yes. So this line opened a lot lower than that. So all the sharp money is on Central Florida. It's already moved that direction. See here, here's wow. what I I go here. If this if this game is week one, UCF is favored by 15, 16 points. You're right. You're right. And that's no, you're right. Sometimes you got to think about and. Factor in, w- w- this is a little too raw for us because we know this Central Florida team very well. But, you know, when they lost to Cincinnati two weeks ago, they were in the middle of a quarterback switch. They had just had all these guys leave the program. It felt like even in a loss, it could have been a get-right game for them last week where they, they finally have their quarterback. They know which direction they're going there. It appears that their transfer issues are, are behind them. This could be like a team with a new lease on life in the second half of the season. I would bet on Central Florida a lot because of their style of play down the stretch. Okay. Well, you guys have talked me into it. I'm going to be BYU. Just being honest with you. I mean, if, if you're, you know, it, A, I want to be contrarian a little bit, but <laughs> I do. But to my point is this. I do see the Vegas money switching hands, and I understand what you're saying there. I just, to me, I look at it two points. I mean, I just – 
I don't know. I think BYU is better than them and can beat them. Yeah. Well, you know, and this could go the other way where right. maybe right. BYU, you know, is co- is cooked after what happened in the fourth yeah. quarter last weekend in Ames. That could yeah. be a possibility too. I just I think that quarterback running back combo is really good. Well, we're uh, we're samesies on four games, guys. Only one off on two others. These, so. these were brutal. They were. I'm, I really because when I always look it up first, I always go see like are there fun top twenty five battles that everyone really cares about? Who's got a good team? Big Ten, Big Twelve. That's how I kind of go through it. And at first, I was like, "There's not many good games." And then I started looking at spreads, and I was like, "These are fun." This is a spectacular special set. Right? I think I'm going to go put something on the four games we agree on just I, to see how it plays. Let's Roll go. The, yeah. Four game parlay, underdog game, parlay. Team yep. NFM. That's right. Pick That's let's right. let's all put in five bucks together. Parlay that at fifteen dollars. We could make a lot of money. Sounds good. I'm, I'm in. in. I'm in. Sickos. Yeah. The Nebraska Furniture Mart pick sickos. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Um, Bloom and I, uh, actually, we had a great, real sicko play. We like the under for Utah and Houston this week, under 37. We're all wow. over it. And my, uh, my play of the week is the under in Cincinnati, Colorado. Nice. Which, that that's like in the 60s, right? It's like 50. 58 and a half. Oh, yeah. Oh, at yeah. Colorado? Tyson Veidt's going to shut that Colorado team down, baby. Yep. <laughs> yes. I love it. Love college football. All right, get out to Nebraska Furniture Mart. Start your Christmas shopping. Yeah, coming up soon. Hey, Come out and enjoy the see, spectacular this Saturday. If you see a Bowser walking around on Saturday, it's not me. Okay. It's Bowser. It's Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> if you see Willie Nelson walking around Saturday night, it's not me. It's not you either? It's Willie Nelson. It's Willie Nelson. It's Willie Nelson. I'll... My uh, daughter, this is real funny just to, to wrap this up. She, yeah. They had dance, uh, the costume party at dance last yeah. night. And my daughter's five. And every girl there is dressed as some sort of princess. You know, they're all in these different princess outfits. Right. And, and my daughter was dressed as 90s country star Alan Jackson. <laughs> is there any collusion a part of that? Is there any, like, influence there? Uh... Yeah. No, to be what? so she rides around on the truck with me and I listen to a lot of Alan Jackson because yeah. when in Rome yeah. and uh, she loves him and she found out that he's been sick and she wanted right. to honor him and be him for Halloween this year. Look at that. What a sweet yeah. kid. You got great yeah. kids. What a family. We all Way down it, yonder on the Chattahoochee, baby. All right. That's right. Uh, Thanks, the, boys. The, the, the picks boys on Thursdays have been hotter than a hoochie coochie this year. <laughs> Let's see if we can keep it up. God bless you all for watching, going by and listening. Go and buy yourself one of those badass refrigerators at Nebraska Furniture Mart. For Thank Tim Mullen, for Brent Bloom, my name is Chris Williams. We'll be back next week.